Coming up on Made in Virginia, it's a tradition of the fine furniture making in Madison County, where the best Virginia hardwoods and handcrafted perfection has endured beautifully since 1830 and continues today right here on Made in Virginia. Made in Virginia is brought to you by At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. In Virginia, probably more so than any other state in the Union, traditions reign supreme and nothing is more enduring than a fine piece of handcrafted furniture. A fine piece of legacy heirloom furniture is often the muse for remembrances and storytelling that connect generations of friends and families. For nearly two centuries, Six generations of the Clore family have been making early American traditional furniture in Madison County, Virginia. The original place was a, a one-man operation about two miles from here. That was my grandfather's grandfather that started the business. And he was a one-man operation with his little shop right behind his home. It was first opened in 1830, and it wasn't here on this site at the time. Been here for since the early 1900s or so, but um, they've been in business for a long time. The Clore family settled in Virginia in 1717. Uh, they were the second settlement at Germana and came here, uh, not set out, but uh, wound up becoming indentured service to Governor Alexander Spotswood and settled in this area in what's now known as uh, the Hebron Valley. The Clores did, and uh, so they were here before um, the United States, obviously. Been in this area ever since. Uh, his sons and grandsons uh, carried on that tradition. Uh, one of his grandsons was E.A. Clore, who built the current factory at, in about 1920, 21, and we've been at this location since that time. So how does traditional American furniture continue its allure in today's society, where much of what we buy is meant to be disposable? And it's not just the furniture that endures. Many of the tools and machines were also handmade on site and are still in use today. Even the shop itself and the hot water for the bending jigs are heated with sawdust and bits of scrap wood. My great uncles and my great grandfather uh, may on site built a lot of the uh, tools used in manufacturing today, uh, especially in the chair line. Uh, the, the machines that are used to bore and to mortise the chair posts were built on site from scratch. And when they were originally built, they ran off of a line shaft driven by a steam engine prior to electric motors. Well, I guess the longevity comes from being able to make furniture that people appreciate and they know that it's gonna last several lifetimes. It's a proven thing because I have some furniture that my grandfather made and uh, I think I have one piece that my great-grandfather made. So it's a thing of pride to be able to continue the business as it's been done. Uh, right here on this location for a, about a hundred years right here on this location. The world is certainly, uh, to me, becoming more of a disposable society. The children today are raised, I think most products um, you purchase are disposable. 
you know, uh, from appliances to, you know, anything, household goods, it's all based on anything that's disposable. When it breaks, you go buy a new one. And that's not our philosophy. So we have to fight against the disposable furniture, for lack of a better term. Uh, when we're selling an heirloom piece that can be handed down from generation to generation, um, we're not competing against um, the, the brands that are made to, to fill a need for a few years and you throw them away or you give them to Goodwill. Uh, we're, we're producing a piece of furniture that is meant to be handed down from generation to generation. But more than anything, it's the knowledge and skills handed down from generation to generation, along with the fine Virginia hardwoods, that makes this furniture truly heirloom quality. Well, the chairs themselves is just like any of the other furniture that we make here. It's a lifetime piece. It's not something you're going to have to repeatedly buy or anything. We make it once. It's not going to wiggle apart on you or anything. It's going to be there for you to hand down to your children and generations to come. And if it does need any repair work, we're here. We're there that we can uh, repair it. We can do whatever needs to be done. We can replace the seat or anything for you. Every piece was handmade. And when it was handmade, it was made so that it will not over the years, it will actually tighten instead of wiggling loose. The rungs and the slats of drag heel down to about 4% moisture. The post have, you know, 12, 14% in it, and as they dry out, the joints actually tighten instead of loosening, and you won't have any problems with it. They hold value very well. Um, we have chairs that, you know, average, a chair will last 50 or 60 years anyway, that, you know, and a lot of people bring them back and have new seats put in them, and have them touched up or refinished, and they just like new chairs. An awful lot of what we do here, it's all about quality. You know, we, we, like I said, when we do something, we try to do it right. We don't necessarily build the fanciest furniture in the world, but we try to build high quality furniture that's gonna last for generations. The first recorded pieces of furniture built and sold by Moses Clore back in 1830 were for a local church. Moses Clore delivered to the church clerk a chair and table. Let's see how nearly 200 years later, E.A. Clore Sons makes those chairs and tables today. Clore offers four hardwoods, a native Virginia walnut, cherry, oak, and an imported mahogany. The rough sawn lumber is first run through a gang ripsaw. These are the first cuts in making the front and rear chair legs, or what are called by cabinet furniture makers, the posts. The ripped pieces are then cut to the length needed. From there, the posts are turned to that perfectly rounded shape, exposing the beautiful grain. Once turned, a flat face is milled on the back post. And the top is sliced by a guillotine type blade that will be rounded later. The back posts are submerged in a hot water and soap bath for a minimum of two hours. This softens the wood and readies the posts to be placed in the bending jig. The posts air dry in this jig for several weeks. The ambient temperature and humidity affect the length needed for drying. When dry, they retain their curved shape and are at the perfect angle to create the back of the chair. A groove or mortise is cut into the post to accept the fitted end of the two slats required for the back of the plane chair. This slot mortise machine is a handmade piece of Clore equipment. The back of the chair, referred to as slats, are steam bent. Here, the bent slats are sanded to fit the slot mortise of the back post.
The rungs are shaped in a dowel machine, 10 total for each chair. The seat rungs are 1 and 1 eighths of an inch in diameter, and the leg rungs are 7 eighths of an inch. The rounded rungs are cross-cut to length in a rung jig. A tenon 1 inch in length and 11 sixteenths of an inch in diameter is milled onto each end of the rungs. A hole or mortise is bored into the posts to accept the tenon cut on the rungs. Once all of the component parts are made, the chair is assembled by hand. The back posts are first fitted and glued with the slates and two rungs. The friction of the precise fit holds the pieces in place. Glue is added for strength, but it is really the fit that makes it an EA Clore chair. Each piece is temporarily clamped to draw up a tight fit. Of course, sanding goes along with each step in the process. Then, the front two posts and rungs are fitted and glued, and again temporarily clamped for a tight fit. The front and back posts are then bored and mortised to accept the tenon of the final six rungs. These rungs hold the front and back of the chair together. The chair is taking shape. Most of the sanding is completed in the component stage of the build, so now the chair is ready to be stained and sealed. The completed chair is sent to the finishing room, where it is once again checked for quality. Once checked, the chair is stained in one of several standard colors or matched to the customer specifications. Depending on the finish, some stains are wiped on, while others are sprayed. Once the stain is dried, a coat of sealer is sprayed on and dried for 24 hours. The fine grain and finish is beginning to appear with the stain and sealer coats completed. The nearly finished chair is now ready to be seated. The traditional material for seat bottoms is a fiber rush and it takes a little more than two pounds of the woven material to complete a seat bottom. Master Chair Weaver Mr. Steven Dodson has been weaving chairs his entire life. They bring them to me every Wednesday or Thursday and so what they want done. And I have them ready when they come back. But I've done it all my life, all my, ever since I was about 23. I just met, I just was born, raised on a farm and in the I never did mine work. That's the only thing I did. <laughs> I think it looks better than a wooden bottom, and it sets better. That's my opinion, but somebody else might have a different opinion, but that's what I got in my house. Once the seat bottom is completed, the chair is then sent for the final hand finishing. A coat of lacquer is applied and sanded smooth, and then the final coat of lacquer is applied. And that is how an heirloom quality chair is made in Virginia. Next, just as was first delivered by Clore back in 1830 along with the chair comes a table. Here, we are going to build a bedside table. Like all EA Clore furniture, the process starts with choosing the right hardwoods. Here, Virginia cherry is chosen. The individual boards for the top are roughly an inch and an eighth thick. They are cross-cut to the rough length for the bedside table. The top board pieces are joined flat on one side and then planed to a uniform thickness. The two edges are straightened on a ripsaw. 
the top pieces are glued and clamped on a glue wheel, where they dry for 24 hours. The table legs are turned on a copy lathe to match a determined pattern. The legs are hand sanded. The legs are mortised to accept the tenon of the frame or apron. The apron in matching hardwood is cut to size and a tenon is cut on each end. The component parts are sanded. The table is assembled. The apron and the shelf support is attached to the table's legs using a mortise and tenon joint, which is glued and clamped. Like all EA Clore furniture, the precision fit and friction is what primarily holds the furniture in place. The glue is added for additional strength. Each step along the way, the table is checked for squareness. The two sides are dressed using a hand plane. The two sides are then joined together in the same fashion. The back apron is applied with a mortise and tenon joint and dressed to height using the hand plane and clamped together and checked for squareness. The table frame is now complete. The drawers are assembled using dovetail joints on all four corners and hand fit to the internal frame. Note the perfect fit and easy slide of the drawers. The completed top and shelf is attached with screws. The table now undergoes the same sanding and staining process as the chair. And that is how you make an heirloom quality bedside table. When you do something for a lifetime and those skills are passed down from generation to generation, you not only become the best in the world at doing it, but somehow it gets into your blood. The Clore family and the fine furniture woodworkers they employ are the embodiment of the Virginia craftsmen, and they have been doing it here in Madison County for nearly two centuries. All of our guys that's in the shop now, minus maybe one or two, have been here 30 plus years. Myself, I've been here 40, and there's a couple others that's been here a few years older, longer than I have. They, uh, we wouldn't be here if we didn't like the work that we're doing. And you know, nobody stays in a place 40 years if they don't enjoy doing it to a certain extent and everything. So, yeah, yeah, we all love, you know, enjoy working with the wood. We've, we've made a decent living at it. I mean, we by no means are wealthy. But I mean, it's been a good family bringing up. I've sent my son off to college and he's home and doing his own thing now. So, I mean, I did all right. You know, it makes you feel good when you have people that want to work and want to work for you and stay with you. Uh, I can't think of but maybe one or two men that work here now that haven't been here at least 30 years. I know one man that worked here a few years ago. I know he was here at least 60 years before he finally retired full time. And, uh, that means a whole lot to you when you have someone that stays with you that long. For these craftsmen, there's nothing better than working in Virginia and using Virginia-grown hardwoods. Well, I, I attribute uh, contribute a whole lot of it from being in Virginia because the, the, all the stuff, uh, most of the materials and anything that we can get and the labor and everything is right here local in Virginia. Uh, just, just so many advantages growing up in a small town, the slower pace of life, the, the fact that everybody knows everybody. Uh, yeah, some people make think that people meddle in each other's business, but no, for the most part, people know each other and they care about each other and look out for each other in a, in a small town. Uh, this part of the country, uh, this part of Virginia, 
we we do. We try to look out for each other. Uh, when you when you have a little problem, fall on hard times, your neighbor and your friends are going to be there to pick you up. And it's the same thing here with the guys right here. One person's going through a tough time. He's got 15 others, 16 others here to pick him up, and, to, and they got his back. You have to be in a position where you you've got your wood, you've got your lumber and everything, that's where you can get it supplied to you. We try to use as much local as we can and everything. Well, I think some of the Virginia hardwoods are the best, you know, that are grown, you know, the hardwoods uh, of uh, the oak and the walnut. We buy a lot of walnut out of state now, but you still get a lot of good hardwood. Uh, the cherry and the oak and the walnut, all come from right here locally, uh, you know, some of it, all we can, you know, we can't, you can't get it all right here local, but we do buy most of our lumber local. I've traveled to, I've been in 46 states, and I have yet to find one that I like, as well as Virginia. Um, you know, we have a variety of weather, you know, it's the old saying, if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes, it'll change, but um, I don't believe I would want to be anywhere that stayed hot or cold year round. So I like the, the varying climate. Um, I like the mountains. We a short drive from the ocean like that, but as far as I like to live in where I can look out the window and see the mountains. Well, I've, I've lived in Madison County almost all my life, and I don't know any any different. You know, it's I've, I've, I've never seen anywhere else that I would rather live. I like the climate, I like the, the it's certainly like the people and all like that. The location is good. Uh, it's places in the Shenandoah Valley that are beautiful. And if I had to live anywhere else, it would be in the Shen Shenandoah Valley. But I've lived here all my life, so I've gone, I've, you know, I've grown and lived here and I just want to stay here. As tourism director for Madison, I've been there 15 years, and that's one of the top questions people ask is, where is EA Clore? How do I get there? Or isn't EA Clore from here? Uh, that type of thing, right up there with, you know, how do I get to Old Rag Mountain? How do I hike? It's always one of the first questions people want to know. Madison's a very small county. We have about 13,000 people and only about 210 people in the town of Madison. So to have that small of a community, we get a lot of travelers and tourists in who appreciate the craftsmanship of places like the Acor. Well, I've been here 40 years, and the biggest pride I see is when everybody, when I'm out in the community and everything, and you see a piece sold here at an auction or someplace else, and it's still bringing the price to a new piece practically, Will. And it just gives you the, the feeling of, well, you know, I helped do that, and that's, it's still here for the next person to take, you know, and it just doesn't change. Well, it's kind of, of something that you don't hear of in every day. And we're very proud of it. And I'm very proud to be a part of the family that's been in business that long. Just as the craft of woodworking and fine furniture building after six generations gets into one's DNA, so does the pride and satisfaction of owning, using, and passing along from one generation to the next a fine piece of furniture made in Virginia. President Herbert Hoover established two presidential retreats, or camps, during his administration. Camp Rapidan in Madison County and Camp David in the Catoctin Mountains in Maryland. The last president to use Camp Rapidan in Madison County was John F. Kennedy, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Jimmy Carter, or Ronald Reagan? The answer, when we return. Made in Virginia is brought to you by... At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. The last president to use the Rapid in Camp was C. Jimmy Carter in 1979. Next time on Made in Virginia, 
we experience where 21st century award-winning carpets are being produced and shipped all over the world in the very same mill that began in 1935. Covering 35 acres under one roof, you have to see it for yourself right here on Made in Virginia. If you would like to learn more about today's episode or suggest a Virginia manufacturer for the program, you may visit us at madeinvirginia.tv and at wvpt.net.